welcome back uh, we are discussing about uh, general education outcomes of emotional intelligence so we discussed about how ai facilitates our writing skills presentation skills problem solving ethical behavior how ai uh, uh, enhances the effectiveness of teamwork uh, how it facilitates teamwork also having a global perspective we just highlighted what is the perspective of emotional intelligence in a global context how it creates scope for uh, achievement of global peace and prosperity how it creates scope for understanding each other from other nationalities other cultures how ai goes beyond cultural boundaries and expanding the scope for understanding each other's emotions thereby facilitating a positive climate for international understanding that is where ai is very very helpful in uh, expanding its global applications and then we discussed how ai helps us in our lifelong learning so as we all know that learning is more or less permanent change in human behavior uh, as a result of practice it is not that one day you are showing high level of emotional intelligence and next day you goes down so that is how it shows it is a continuous process and we need to seek also feedback on our emotional intelligent behaviors is there any incremental changes happening to us maybe our trainers our counselors our assessors our uh, um, teaching assistants teachers they may be the right person to give us the right kind of feedback on our growth and development in our emotional intelligence and uh, the last but not least is called appreciation for diversity and a diverse perspectives how does ai how does ai helps us in appreciating in appreciating diversity and diverse perspectives so we have seen that even even i published a paper on managing diversity through emotional intelligence in fact this paper was published during um, late 90s uh, in the journal of um, uh, indoor management research that is published by uh, manage indoor management institute in indore uh, the, the the article highlights the role of ai in managing diverse teams the paper focuses on how to manage diverse teams in organizations or basically it is focusing on diversity so we find diversity in terms of people working together from diverse backgrounds such as culture colors caste language li different language different languages uh, so a when people from different cultures are available they have different dip, di, different behavior they they have different attitudes they have different expectations so every individual display a unique basis of behavior uh, which may not ex fulfill the expectation of others so in the process many miscommunication happens many misunderstanding happens so we often say that diversity uh, most of the times creates conflict among people or team members but if you look at the positive side of it emotionally intelligent leader always assimilates diverse ideas from different peoples so that is where he says that i don't want to miss the collective intelligence available in my team irrespective of their differences so i am not interested in utilizing their differences i am interested in utilizing the talents the similarities that can contribute the success of the teamwork so that is where ai helps understanding people understanding people better their emotions their intentions their behaviors so once you understand the emotional status of your people probably you will be able to cater the services required for their management so that is where emotional intelligence helps in managing diversity and going for the we can say that uh, 
on experimental basis in United States the EI was uh, you know studied in education systems and EI experts try to experiment in a college situations uh, where they say that the from the greater expe expectations to a new vision for learning. How EI can create a new vision of learning in higher education which has created a lot of revolution all around the globe now that EI needs to be a part of the curriculum of the higher education system across the globe. So, that is why nowadays we have been uh, witnessing or observing in IITs, NITs, IIMs everywhere even in university education emotional intelligence is getting a special, special status how to nurture emotionally stable students, how to enhance the emotional maturity of students, how to enhance the overall emotional intelligence. So, that when they get into the latter stage of their life, they can better manage their personal life as well as their career in working organizations. That is why EI is taking greater momentum and uh, um, more emphasis and uh, getting a better status in our higher education systems. Uh, if you look at the education systems, we identify the relationship between the teacher and students the empowered learner, how we can empower the learner or the students in our classroom situations through emotional intelligence. So, one of the benefits that we can communicate emotions, we can teach how to communicate emotion, how to communicate emotion, communicate emotion effectively. So, this is one way to enhance their communication, because communication is the only reason to bring conflict in our life. Sometimes we say it is due to unintentional communication, many times what happens we communicate certain things, we do not actually intend to communicate by mistakes, we say then we feel guilty, then we feel um, that um, we repent due to our error uh, and many times we arrogantly communicate without paying respect to others feelings. So, that also creates con conflict. So, how to communicate honestly and respectfully, so that that creates a climate of comfort, a climate of opportunities, a climate for negotiation a climate for discussion and learning. So, that is how we take care of in the sense of empowered learning, empowered learner. The learner can benefit through communication. The second thing is has the ability to manage change, yes. So, how effectively managing change, manage change through EI. When any kind of change takes place, it creates stress, disturbances, discomfort, is not it? So, these are the likelihood outcome of any kind of change when that are those are initiated in organizations. So, EI helps us to make us calm and compose under difficult situations under disturbances. So, that is how it, it builds up our coping strategy how to cope effectively with any kind of change. Works within diverse group. Say for examples when we conduct group activities in our classroom situation. Suppose, I have given a group task to perform a skit on national development or psychology for the growth of humanities. And there are many students who are not when I change their group from one group to other groups, they suddenly try to oppose, because they are certain comfort zones, they are at ease to communicate freely with certain peoples, which satisfies their emotional needs. So, that is why they are comfortable, but the usual reaction is resistance to change, but when I convince them that this is how 
you are going to benefit out of this, then the probability change the groups. So, that is how they develop the ability to manage change and the third one is works within diverse group works within diverse group. You know I often observe in my class that a particular group of students they try to sit together throughout the semester, but when I say okay, those who have sat during the last week this side can change to the right side, you will find tremendous resistance to you know, why sir why why it is so we are comfortable to sitting with our friends etcetera etcetera. Then when I try to convince them no by doing this you are limiting your interactions you are not get, you are not creating scope to understand and get in touch with others. So, more you interact with the different groups new groups more you get to know and that that is how they develop the diverse group systems and a diversity in terms of knowing about others knowing about other cultures, other disciplines, somebody is from chemical, somebody is from computer science, somebody is for management, somebody is for humanities. So, when they try to interact with each other disciplines, they also learn more about other disciplines, other people etcetera. That is how they develop the diversity the within themselves. Then informed learner, how they are informed well, understands the human imagination expression and the products of many cultures. So, when you talk about informed learner, so this shows that how a learner is well aware of about other cultures, how other people thinks like you know in terms of cross cultural communications there are differences. American they shake hands in a different way, Europeans shake hands in a different way, but when it comes to Indians, Indians need a very tight handshake. If you give them a loose handshake, they feel that the person who is interacting with them is not interested. So, a particular kind of behavior also indicates a kind of message they are passing that they are not interested or they are interested to have business. So, every interactions facilitates our behavior for future activity. So, that is why how other people think, how other people behave, how other people express, you can only get to know when you interact about others, when you develop your awareness about others. So, more you are aware about others, better you are in your IQ profile, sorry EQ profile. So, that is how diverse culture bring diverse experiences and enriches the domain of one's emotional intelligence. Then the last, then next is the responsible learner. So, one is empowered learner, another is informed learner and the third one is what you call the responsible learner. As a learner, what is your responsibility to discharge? You discharge duty, are you responsible for certain activities for yourself, for others? So, that is how we need to nurture in oneself that you, you, you need to be a responsible person in the society. Why? Has deep understanding of oneself and a respect for complex identities of others. Many times what do happens without understanding other cultures, other behaviors, many students criticize others. Like say for somebody is having a different dress patterns, which is seems to be very unusual. Somebody is having a different kind of haircut, you know, you know whenever any football match is going on the students they try to follow them. Eh? So, a particular hairstyle reflects a particular kind of behavior. So, without understanding the implications if another students pass a sarcastic comments that creates conflict among them. So, we, we need to develop a responsible behavior within the students, so that they reflect maturity, they reflect assertiveness and uh, they reflects a, a kind of understanding that does not hurt others rather that reflects a respect for others. So, that is why one needs to understand their histories and their cultures, so that they can better behave. These are some of the skills that um, 
has been identified by uh, Robert Barron uh, in his uh, tool what he called the emotional question inventory EQI. He has identified a couple of skills that are vital for one's or student success like emotional self awareness we have already discussed about how accurately they can judge their own emotions, how accurately they can regulate their emotions. Suppose you are feeling angry, how could you control your anger? That is very important. Are you aware that you are feeling angry? Are you aware that if you express anger on others, what could be the consequences? What could be the outcome? So, these are certain things that needs to be communicated to the students to take control of their own emotions. Then another is self regard, how do you value others? How do you value yourself? You know, self is consists of inner self, outer self, interpersonal self. You know, many times what happens? We overvalue the that we are the best. But when you over project yourself, people say this person is the worst. You can only make a balance by interper developing a good interpersonal trust. When other people value that yes, you are a good person. But many times due to over evaluation and under evaluation, we commit error, error or you can say mistakes. You are unable to assess your strength and weakness. Okay. So, if you are not aware of well aware of your strength and weakness, then you are sometimes devaluing yourself. If you are overvaluing, you are saying again that you are the best, you are dwelling, you are saying that no, I am not at par with others, but actually you are a good person, but your self assessment is not good. So, self regard sometimes brings positive values in life, sometimes if you over evaluation is there, it may create trouble for others. So, one self regard is called respecting yourself, honoring yourself, positive value towards yourself. So, one needs to not unless until you feel well you cannot think well. So, it is it is always important to develop a good self within oneself. So, this good self should be consists of good virtues and values. So, good virtues or positive virtues and values. Then it comes to the assertiveness, communicating something without hurting others. That is what we call assertiveness. You know, basically, when we talk about communications, there are three kind of communication. One is called aggressive. Submissive and assertive. So, neither aggressive nor submissive is socially acceptable or respectable, but people often say you can behave assertively. Assertiveness is considered as the most acceptable, most acceptable or respectable, but it also varies from there are cultural differences. In India we have seen 
that we have so much power distance between junior and seniors. Even if assertiveness is also considered as aggressiveness, nobody encourages that you talk on the face. No people very rarely appreciate face to face communication. Rather, people are comfortable with submissive communication. If your senior is saying, and if you are a good listener, then you are liked by all. But if you question your seniors or if you question the authority of a person, then you are counter question by your senior that how dare you to ask me this question. So, this is a proposition, this is a notion that uh, you know create a depression or that dissatisfies or brings frustration in the minds of a junior to grow up or to develop and forget about the question of assertiveness. But in western cultures, due to freedom given to students, the students is free to ask questions for his personal growth and development and that courage, that is actually a notion of encouraging freedom of expression, freedom of expression and that will develop independence, independence, independence in the sense independent thought, independent action. That means, we are empowering the individual to stand on his feet alone, but in India dependency is very much developed by force, exercise of coercive power power and less freedom so when you are giving less freedom to a person to express his thoughts and feelings you cannot develop individuality that is where AI creates a lot of awareness. So, AI in the process of in the development of independence is very important. Now, there is another skills that is equally important is called self actualization. AI and self actualization there is a direct relationship. In fact, you, if you look at uh, the Maslow's need hierarchy theories, you know IQ is required for satisfaction of the lower level needs like when IQ helps you to get into a job and that will help you to satisfy your basic needs. Then the, the moment you enter into the middle level needs like is respect, honors and uh, then you become status conscious, then you realize the value of higher level of needs where you try to nurture higher values like respecting others, honor. Uh, creating a positive uh, state of mind, helping others, altruistic behavior and a good citizenship behavior. These are certain characteristics that EI takes care of when you enter into the latter period of your work life. And self actualization is nothing, but it, it is not only one's own development, it also takes care of others development. How your behavior has impacted the overall growth and development of the society. And you feel that I have used my optimum skills and competencies for the growth and development of self and others. That is what we call self actualization. But taking it further also, even EI is also related to transcendence. Right? EI and transcendence. Transcendence is nothing but a spiritual need, 
which I often used to quote that it may be this need may be higher than self actualization what we talk about because this is even after optimal achievement people are not happy with themselves they they, they, are, they feel as if they are not at peace. So, the peace and tranquility this brings peace and tranquility peace and tranquility where you derive maximum emotional satisfaction. This is where AI plays a very important role. Well, when you talk about radiology testings, how you are behaving, uh, how your behaviors are guided by reality principles, how well, how you are well aware about the reality of life, do you really respect the rules and regulation of the society, are you guided by the reality principle that is very important focus, flexibility, how flexible you are. We often say that behave like a Roman when you are in Rome, that shows the flexibility of a person, because when you are moving from one place to another place, another place, one country to another country, the rules are different, regulations are different, cultures are different, peoples are different. So, you need to change yourself, not the, the situation will change for you. So, that is why every situation demands flexibility. So, therefore, flexibility is one of the important uh, emotional competence or emotional intelligence skills that needs to be nurtured among the students for their benefits in their future life. Then problem solving we have already discussed, uh, stress tolerance also we have already discussed if you are emotionally stable, emotionally mature and uh, if you are emotionally intelligent you will be able to regulate your emotions in the right way. So, that will help you to develop your stress tolerance mechanisms. Impulse control, we often say that think thrice before you react and this kind of control often comes across experiencing situations, encountered with different uh, events, incidents and uh, uh, 50 percent of our emos, impulse control happens. If suppose you are on an angry mood or angry state, just put down your head for, for a se few seconds look down for few seconds, you will find 50 percent of your anger going down and you are managing your impulses, cooling down themselves or people often advise, even I also tell my students when you are in high temper, just close your eyes, take a deep breath and open your eyes then, then you will find as if 50 percent of your stress is gone out of you. But if you make face to face contact, at the time of your anger or Im high impulse rate, you are likely to blast others than to control yourself. So, this is how we, we, we educate our students to control impulse. The best way is you, you must try to channelize direct your uh, the, the emotions that you are feeling in the right directions. Then empathy, how you, you are displaying care and concern about others. So, uh, sympathy is only conscience, but empathy is care plus concern. You are initiating certain action, putting your leg into other shoe, that is why we say that uh, empathy is very vital and to be nurtured in students, because uh, they are the future citizens, they are going to take care of themselves, they are going to take care of the society, they are going to take care of their families. So, empathy is going to benefit them in a big way. Thank you.